Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths. Welcome to this video on the series Power 9 Getting the Best Performance. We're at part 4. I record these at home in what's known as IBM Sidcup, South East London, in the glorious sunshine today. We've now got to section 15. Let's zoom in. Looking at the CPU frequency monitoring, where you may never see the gigahertz dip right at the top if your machine gets very hot. And what is ASHRAE? I've decided to make the utilization uh, section into a different video. Now then, can we actually monitor the CPU frequencies uh, in action? Well, yes, we can on the various sorts of Power 9 machines. So this is AX on uh, PowerVM, and so if you run some of the older commands, uh, like the attributes out of the ODB, it's telling us the old nominal gigahertz. This has already raised a few complaints from people saying, I thought you sold me a 3.9 gigahertz and it's a 3.2. Um, there are some new commands that have, have it adjusted in here so we can capture the real current gigahertz. So here's LPOSTAT minus E. And in here, in red, we can see the new gigahertz current uh, rating. And it says we're running at 119% of the nominal gigahertz. And although we're not allowed to say overclocking, that looks like 19% overclocking to me. The MP stat, of course, lists out all your CPUs and gives you totals as well. That shows the similar numbers as we can see here. On the Edmon for AX side of things, we've always reported this um, CPU speed up in here. So this is the nominal frequency. And in 7.2 TL4 and above, we have, if you're looking at it online, then we have the current speed out in here. We see the 3.9 gigahertz. If you want to capture it to file, again, it's from TL4. You have to add a new command line parameter. Not the prettiest flag I've ever seen, but uh, there it is. So if you're using uh, nmon-f to capture to a file, m to set it into a particular directory, typical usage pattern in here, and then we have to add the new flag. I'd put it on the end just to be safe. Minus f has to be the first parameter. And then um, if you look in the mmon file, here's my virtual machine 206, and you'll find some new CPU megahertz uh, tabs in here and we can see the nominal and current gigahertz as you'd expect down in here and these are already been added to the n1 analyzer and the n1 chart for graphing if they detect the new data they'll output the graphs i'm working on njmon that captures json data and then you put that into a time series database i could talk for hours i've got lots of other videos on this but already that's had the nominal gigahertz and the current gigahertz coming out of uh, aix and linux as well on power here's a little worked example of what you might uh, see i've got a s924 16 cpu so it's not the 24 cpu uh, options nice cold computer room uh, not you know fairly small um, configuration in here and I went to have a look at it, LPOS at minus E, and I thought, wow, that's really slow. I didn't think it would go down that low. And then I noticed up here it's in static mode. I must have set that like the week before. And so that's how I found it in this morning. So then started a workload. It quickly rose in it quickly rose in a couple of seconds up to the 3.9 expected gigahertz, 19% overclocking. You actually see down in here the utilization numbers. This is 32% user time now with my program uh, running. Uh, this is hinting that we're not running SMT8. Remember with SMT8 we're like three times the performance. So this is hinting you're only using the one times, the 30%. There's another 60% in here if you throw enough threads at it. Workload could actually be done. And I switched off the power saving mode, uh, nothing changed. It changed from static to dynamic, and that's a little bug we have in uh, some of the commands in here. I reported that, but nobody seems particularly interested to get that right. Um, changed it um, on the HMC, and you set it to maximum mode, and then it says dynamic, but uh, you should know what's really going on. And then I stopped the workload, and remember in maximum mode, it should stay up at the high gigahertz, so um, little work, pieces of work coming in when it's basically idle will actually hit it at full gigahertz rating and get the work done very quickly with no time lag to get the CPU gigahertz up. And we can't see any overheating on my machine and bringing the gigahertz down because my computer room's cold and my computer is in a top configuration. On the Linux side of things, then, this is uh, native non-virtualized, not on Power VM. We have some various commands in here. So proc CPU info, we can see individual CPUs uh, changing in here. 
that's been going on for uh, quite a while. If you go to Nmon for Linux and you hit MMM, you see these little graphs and you can see your, your hot CPUs and green colder CPUs and some variations in the middle. We also got DMessage, you can spot the fact that when you change the frequencies in here and some other commands give you some other gigahertz ratings, so you can work through those. But that doesn't cover the power VM running Linux. For those then, we have uh, this chart in here, the normal places you might find that, that we saw on the previous page don't work in, in this environment. Nmon only reports the, the nominal gigahertz, but my Njmon can actually work out the fact that we're overclocking in here. It actually goes to this file called sysdev syscpu, and there's a couple of other uh, files in that uh, area. And it works out the differences between the per and the spur to work out the overclocking. Because this is nearly one, you can actually see the 19% in there. It can then work out what the rating is by multiplying up the nominal megahertz. But that's reported in the JSON output of uh, NJMON. This is my promised chart for the IBM i. I'm afraid I don't know what this all means. My IBM my friend said, oh yes, we, we handle all this and we have for years and it's all going to work uh, perfectly as normal. If you're new to this area and an IBM i person, this may give you a few hints and tips to what to ask for or what to look for when you're finding similar stats. I've covered this as we've gone along. I can't see the gigahertz reduction uh, when it's 100% busy. But then I haven't got the maximum number of cores. My computer room's nice and cool. My computer room's not at high altitude. That generates more problems because the air is thinner. And so the fans have to go even faster again. Not all my threads are busy. For example, I've got VO servers. I can thrash my application LPARs, but that doesn't thrash my VAO servers necessarily. I haven't got a maximum memory size. I only have four disks at the front. Brand spinning disks can get actually quite hot and they reduce the airflow. The SSDs actually run cold, so they're not a problem. And I have no fancy high speed adapters at the back. So I can never see the gigahertz reduction when 100% busy. In practice, very few people would, in my opinion, only the benchmark team. But at least if it does happen, you'll know that that's perfectly normal because you're getting the temperature up in your machine. If you read the IBM announcements on our power computers, you'll see references to, I'm not sure how to say, ASHRAE, it's the American Association of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers, bit of a mouthful, um, but we're classed as AT computers, so you can see the temperature range that you can operate your computer in, the relative humidity and the maximum height above sea level, I guess that's 10,000 feet, it's quite high. Some computer rooms are rated at uh, A1, which means they have more restricted temperature range in which they're going to operate. So here's the conclusions. Spectre meltdown not as big as hit as we might have imagined so that's really good. We're using energy scale again as we did in previous ranges to have a variable frequency to maximize our performance. A big jump in the RPUS or the CPWs for the IBM I chaps. To get the best from our power nine, we have got to be using SMT8. And if necessary, we reduce the virtual processor account to force good SMT use. That will release some of the compute power so we can go and do other things. If you're not fully configured, then you may never hit that 100% busy and the slight drop in gigahertz. Perhaps you'd like to start monitoring your computer room temperatures and the gigahertz, various ways of doing that. And most of all, we got to get rid of those ghastly single-threaded applications. They're a curse on the computer industry, and the time to say no is now. So that's it for this part. We've only got utilization not so useful in the final video. If you enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up, even subscribe, then you'll be told when there's new videos that I create.